Hey, I am um, Kevin and I work with Nick doing uh, SEO and I told him I would put together a uh, video audit of your site, give you guys an overview of where you guys are at right now in terms of like your overall optimization um, and also where you're at in terms of competitors because I uh, ran your competitors through uh, Ahrefs and SEO tool that I use just to get an idea of um, where their websites are at, how established they are. And um, I guess before getting into the video, I'd like to uh, preface it with a few things regarding uh, Google SEO and your industry. You guys are in a health niche and basically what that means in terms of SEO is SEO is more difficult, to put it simply. Google, a few years ago, implemented an um, algorithm update and has continued to um, increase restrictions on websites that discuss a few topics, um, primarily health and finance. They wanted to, or the, the purpose of the um, updates are to ensure that basically nobody's creating bad quality content about topics that can have a significantly negative impact on somebody's life, like bad health or financial advice. As such, it is basically just that much more difficult to establish yourself as a trustworthy source of information in this field. It's doable, it just takes more consistent effort over a longer uh, period of time to basically convince Google that you're trustworthy. Especially with a newer website. Um, I looked up your website's uh, who is information and saw that the domain was purchased in January and I'm assuming um, that then needed to be, the site needed to be designed so that puts us at probably like mid-February, maybe um, late February in terms of when the site actually went live. So basically um, you're a new website, which Google defaults to not trusting websites. And it does this because it doesn't want just anyone to create a website and be able to rank and get organic traffic. So Google needs to be able to trust your website in order to want to send its users to your content. And that trust is built over time by creating good quality content that's accurate and helpful and then um, getting backlinks from other websites that Google already trusts. When those sites link to you, it's basically kind of like a, uh, a reference from another website saying like, hey Google, this site's trustworthy because that website wouldn't link to you if it didn't trust you to some degree. So that's it for my pre-video rant. Um, now I'll just uh, give you guys an overview of what I found uh, looking through your site and um, what I found in regards to your competition. So I like the design of the website. It is um, it's really nice. Divi is a good website builder. Um, obviously this is your homepage and one of the most important things on any page of a website is your H1 tag. There's a title tag, which is what displays in the search results. And then an H1 tag is the most important piece of information on the page. There's also H2, H3, H4, um, down to six. And it's basically a hierarchy of informational importance. H1 being the most significant or most important. And on your homepage, the H1 tag on your homepage is the most important heading on your entire website. And this uh, telehealth consultations, if I uh, right click and then hit inspect, over here on the right, you can see uh, H1 is telehealth consultations. So 
what that says is this is the most important keyword on your website. And looking at Google, this is your homepage and how it appears in the search results. That uh, keyword, if that is your primary keyword, isn't even in your title tag. So that's off the bat. Um, just something I would, that's extremely important to pay attention to is your H1 tag sends the strongest signal to Google about what that page is about. And you guys have um, we have H twos and this is an H three. Another H three. So these should be like H twos. H twos being the second most important heading on a page. This is an H three. So there's no H twos. And, oh, this is the H2, just welcome to wellness. So the H2s don't contain any of your uh, primary keywords. Basically, whatever your H1 is, it should have your primary keyword. And your H2 should have um, like LSI keywords, which is uh, latent semantic indexing. Um, it's not necessarily synonyms, um, or actually just it's not synonyms it's semantically related keywords or topically relevant keywords so like uh, physical therapy uh, rehabilitation would be an LSI keyword for that and jumping over to your blog you guys have been creating content and it's like cited content. Um, one thing I did notice, so this is the uh, Do I Need to Eat Organic. On this page, this is your H1 tag. Do I Need to Eat Organic? Then this is also an H1. So you have two H1s on the page. It's not a big deal since they say the same thing, so they're not competing with each other, but there should be a one H1 on any given page. And then H2s, H3s sprinkled throughout, but one H1. And this, then it goes right to H4. So there's no H2s or H3s, it just goes H1, H1, H4. So the heading tags are the hierarchy of information on a page. They help Google understand your content. And basically, the hierarchy and importance of information on the page. So having one H1 and then H2s, H3s should be primarily what's on the page for a blog post of this length. H4s are like sub subheadings. So I would these these basically should all be H2s just looking at them. And then um, there is only one internal link on this page and it yeah, it's schedule an appointment. So internal links are extremely important for a number of reasons. They help search engines and users access different areas of your website. So for search engines when they come to crawl your website, internal links are what they'll use to go from page to page. But beyond just providing a, a jump from one page to another, they also provide context regarding what that next page is about. So using, for example, like keywords in your uh, anchor links, your internal links between pages, the text that appears is your anchor text, the visible text on the page. 
that anchor text should contain keywords relevant to the page that you are linking to. So if uh, this page is about organic food and within this post it mentions physical therapy, that word physical therapy should be a link to the page about physical therapy. So it helps establish uh, topical relevance and the interrelationship between pages for search engines and it helps users in that it makes it easy for them to go from reading your content to another relevant page on your website. And jumping to another blog post, this is just something I noticed. Um, like all the headings in this post are left aligned and then in the previous post, they're all center aligned. So this is just my personal opinion. The alignment doesn't really matter. Um, I personally think they look better left aligned. And in terms of the informational hierarchy on this page, I believe this one is correct. Like it has the top is an H1, this is an H2, and then I believe this is H3. Yes, so this the informational hierarchy on this page is correct. And jumping over to, um, this is just a uh, Google search for Health Loft. You guys have a ton of great reviews, which is awesome. Um, the only thing is the name, which the Loop Chicago isn't necessary. You can't change it now, but um, basically, the reason is this is Yex. Um, it looks at your citations and citations are this information right here, your name, address, and phone number. It's often referred to as your NAP. And your NAP is a citation. So just like in your blog posts, you've cited sources at the end of your article, those are citations. Same thing applies to your business information. Anywhere that this information appears online is considered a citation. And it doesn't have to appear together. So if your business name is mentioned in a blog article, that's a unstructured citation. But if your name, address, and phone number appear, it's a structured citation, I think for obvious reasons. Um, and then looking down here, this is looking at basically all of your citations across the web and it's looking for consistency. Google uses the consistency of your citations in order to discern the legitimacy and trustworthiness of your business. Like I said uh, at the beginning of the video, Google basically defaults to not trusting businesses and websites online because so many people have abused like loopholes in the system for so long that it's forced search engines to basically inherently distrust websites and businesses and wait for them to basically earn the trust of the search engine. Um, and consistency with your business name, um, address, phone number, all that is important to establishing your business or business's uh, legitimacy in the eyes of search engines. Um, this may or may not be that big of a deal, but basically this, because you use this in your Google My Business listing, the Health Loft, Health, <laughs> Health Loft Physical Therapy and Nutrition, um, The Loop Chicago, because that's in your Google My Business, that's basically how your business name should appear everywhere online. So your Facebook profile name should be Health Loft Physical Therapy and Nutrition, The Loop Chicago. Same thing on Bing, and it's correct on a lot of these, but basically that's how it should appear everywhere. And as you can see, uh, the listings are missing from a number of these um, websites. And this basically just is looking at the websites, as you can see there, um, listing websites or directories like Yelp, Superpages, 
easy local local database they're all um, business directory websites so it's looking at the consistency of your information on those websites so cleaning up those inconsistent citations and basically building out uh, these citations that you don't have yet will help uh, build your online footprint and further legitimize your business as Google sees it, essentially. And back over to the search results. Um, this, if I can get my big head out of the way, this is um, a site colon search and it basically allows me to see every URL on your website. It's just the word site and then a colon and your website address and it pulls up every URL that's indexed on Google for that website. And as you can see with your uh, page titles, they're basically too long. This is technically measured, um, I think it's like 600 pixels wide or something like that, that it, Google ends up truncating title tags, but it's pretty much around uh, 60 characters. I usually try and keep it around like 55 so I know that it won't get truncated. And uh, yeah, it doesn't show in ellipses. And I try and establish like a consistent style for uh, title tags instead of just having it auto generated by WordPress. Like um, if you're using Yoast, this is usually the format that Yoast defaults to. It'll use the uh, page name and then the business name. And I'm pretty sure that's what it's doing. I'm pretty sure it's Yoast that's doing that. Um, so basically just changing the title tag on your pages. Um, I recommend coming up with a structure and sticking with that structure using the same thing like everywhere. Or on all of your uh, titles. And one thing I also noticed is this is your homepage, Health Loft, Physical Therapists, and Registered Dietitians in dot, dot, dot. Um, so I'm assuming physical therapists and registered dietitians, based on the title tag, is your uh, target keyword. But that same keyword is also in your uh, blog page, your about page, your what to expect page. So you're basically cannibalizing that keyword um, on multiple pages. If that, if that is the keyword you wanna rank for on your homepage, then it shouldn't be used in a bunch of um, other title tags because you're basically sending mixed signals about that keyword. So it's called keyword cannibalization when you have multiple uh, pages that are targeting the same keywords. Each page should target a single topic or keyword. So now I would like to jump over to Ahrefs, which is an SEO tool that I use. And it enables me to basically get like a behind the scenes look at your uh, website and what's going on uh, in terms of its SEO and SEO um, or organic performance. This provides an overview of different metrics like your, uh, the UR is your URL rating, DR is your domain rating, uh, backlinks and referring domains, which are two different things. Referring domains is uh, distinct websites that are linking to your site. Like the, if the same website has a link to your website on multiple pages, say there's four pages and each page links to your website, that only counts as one link or one referring domain. So you don't basically you don't get credit for four links from the same website. Uh, organic keywords is basically how many keywords uh, Ahrefs has you uh, ranking for and your uh, organic traffic and traffic value. And uh, looking at the organic search, if I just do it uh, to one year, um, earlier when I was discussing how Google basically inherently distrusts new websites and it's actually called the sandbox. And it's basically like Google puts you in kind of like website timeout 
or the sandbox. And then it's basically up to you to earn your way out of that timeout and become a trusted website in Google's eyes. And especially in the uh, medical industry, um, that's done through creating content that's helpful and uh, acquiring backlinks from websites that Google already trusts. And you guys have a new website, but your domain rating is already seven, which is really good. So the backlinks that you guys have gotten are from good websites and with high domain ratings, like 61, 70. Those are really good. And uh, in terms of the, or regarding the sandbox, it's, there, there's no like exact time frame, but for the most part, Google puts new websites in the sandbox for anywhere from like four to six months and from when the website um, was first indexed. And there's really no way to like shortcut your way out of it. You just consistency with good content and uh, acquiring uh, quality backlinks, which you guys have already started doing. And then just properly optimizing that content with on-page SEO. And just to give you guys an idea of how competitive this um, this industry is, uh, based on the competitors that you sent over, this is bodygears.com. Um, and as you can see, like their domain rating is 36. Um, this is uh, Core PT Clinics. They have a uh, domain rating of seven, but their website's been around since 2014. So you basically just have to get over that initial hurdle of Google not trusting you. Once you kind of like start getting that trust, Google will start giving a little bit more and more and things just build up over time. This is uh, bereact.com. And uh, same thing, they've been around since uh, 2014. Domain rating of 31. Uh, Athletico, these guys are in like a different uh, league, like 67, this takes years and a ton of that, like they have 285,000 backlinks, 2.5, 3,000 referring domains. So that's individual websites linking to them. And last one is a nutrition one, uh, Feed Nutrition Counseling. And yeah, domain rating of 32. So that's not to say that you like can't outrank these websites. It's just that much more difficult because they already have, their domain rating is indicative of a website that Google trusts. And that takes time. These guys actually haven't been around that long looks like, I mean, they're still over a year old. They're about, yeah, well, almost two years old. So it's taken them two years to get to this point. So it is a, a slow crawl, but you can see their organic keywords, they're ranking for three and a half thousand, yeah, three and a half thousand keywords. They're getting a thousand organic visitors every month. And you can see like their, um, their title tag is structured. So it, like this wouldn't get cut off in Google's search results. Same thing with these guys. And these guys, this one's actually really short. But, and there's things you can do to like basically make your, uh, get your title tag to stand out in the search results. Like capitalizing your uh, business name, like Health Loft, sticking that at the end of the title tag in all caps is different than what everyone else is doing with their on-page. So that can help uh, in, entice or encourage users to click through. At the very least, it grabs your attention when you're looking at the search results. So for searchers, it pops. Because if every website has the same title tag structure and yours is a little bit different, using like symbols, uh, like pound signs, uh, I use double slashes in title tags 
I think it helps stand out a lot more. And then uh, capitalizing the business name at the end of the title tag really makes it pop. So you guys have a, a great website. I really like the design. Um, there's no secret sauce with SEO. There's no special formula or any hack that's going to deliver crazy results or anything, um, especially in this industry. The best thing that you can do for SEO is help your users. The more you help people, and people is who Google serves, the, the faster you'll see results with SEO. So the more helpful your content, the quicker you'll begin to see a return on your SEO efforts. And just looking at um, like your blog content, this needs, needs on-page optimization or on-page SEO. Um, like internal links to topically relevant pages and uh, topically relevant blog posts. Those internal links help uh, build your website's overall structure, which in turn, when you've internally linked to topically relevant pages, it helps Google better understand what your website is about and how that content serves searchers. So that is it for this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, try to keep it short. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, uh, just uh, let Nick know. And thank you for taking the time to watch us.